In this lesson, we are going to see how game theory can be applied to model a very simple cybersecurity scenario. Of course, this scenario is far simplified from real world cybersecurity games, but the game theoretic representation really illustrates the underlying incentives that are driving the, the player's behavior. So in this game, we have a defender, I note him D, and an attacker, A. And in a very simple representation, we say that the defender can either sound an alarm or not, an, or not sound an alarm, and the attacker chooses to attack or not attack. What do these payoffs represent? Well, if a defender sounds an alarm and the attacker attacks, the defender earns zero because he detected the attacker, but the attacker gets a payoff of negative one because he was caught. And of course, attackers don't want to be caught, so they could possibly go to jail or face prison or something like that. However, if the defender chooses not to sound an alarm, but the attacker attacks, then the attacker gets a reward of four because he successfully got away with an attack, while a defender earns a reward of negative four, which means his network was attacked, maybe credit cards were stolen, or, or personal, personal information was stolen. Now, if the defender chooses to sound an alarm, but the attacker doesn't attack, the attacker gets nothing because, well, he's not attacking, but the defender incurs a cost of negative two. This is because false alarms are costly. For example, the defender might think there was an attack, so he'll shut down the network, and that's costly, but if there wasn't an attacker, he would lose valuable productivity time. For example, if it's a network defender for a university, you can imagine that all of the university email goes out when the defender sounds a false alarm. Finally, if the defender doesn't sound an alarm and the attacker doesn't attack, the attacker still gets zero because, once again, he's not attacking, but the defender earns a reward of one because he's letting the network function as normal and people are able to send their emails and, and go about their daily business. So I'll leave this as an exercise, but it's easy to show that there is no pure strategy Nash equilibrium in this game. However, what we're going to do in this lesson is find the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. So we're going to let P be the probability that the attacker attacks. Remember, from the lessons on mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, for P to be an equilibrium, then the defender needs to be indifferent between sounding an alarm and not sounding an alarm. So what is the defender's utility, and here again we're talking about expected utility, when the attacker randomizes with probability P and the defender sounds the alarm? Well, P percent of the time, the attacker will attack and the defender will sound the alarm, but in that case the defender earns zero because he detected the attacker. However, 1 minus P percent of the time, the attacker will not attack. If the attacker doesn't attack and the defender sounds the alarm, he earns negative 2. Okay, what, ha what is the defender's expected utility? when the attacker randomizes with probability P and the defender does not sound an alarm. In this case, P percent of the time, or pr with proportion P, he will earn negative four because the attacker will attack, but the defender will not sound an alarm. However, with one minus P proportion of the time, the defender will not sound an alarm and the attacker will not attack, so the defender earns a reward of one. Now, for this to be a, for P to be a Nash equilibrium, these two terms need to be equal. So we could set them equal and solve for P. So in this case, we see that when P is equal to three over seven, when the attacker randomizes with probability three over seven, the defender is indifferent between sounding an alarm and not sounding an alarm. We can now do the same thing for the attacker. So to do this, we say let Q be equal to the probability that the defender sounds an alarm. So the attacker's expected utility, when he chooses to attack, And the defender sounds an alarm with probability Q is equal to negative one times Q, because when the defender sounds an alarm, the attacker gets negative one, plus
plus one minus Q times four. Because when the defender does not sound an alarm and the attacker attacks, he gets a reward of four. Now it is easy to see the attacker's expected utility when he does not attack is just zero. Why is that? Because whenever he does an attack, regardless of what the defender does, he's always earning zero. So for the attacker to be indifferent, his expected utility by attacking has to equal zero. And we can go ahead and solve this. So this implies that minus 5q plus 4 equals 0, which implies q star equals 4 over 5. So we have solved for the Nash equilibrium of this game. When the attacker randomizes by attacking three-sevenths of the time, but not attacking four-sevenths of the time, and the defender randomizes by sounding an alarm four-fifths of the time, but not sounding an alarm one-fifth of the time, we are at a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. In the exercises and the homework, you will see how changes in the payoffs affect these equilibrium probabilities.